Hello, my name is Karak32, and welcome back to my Great Tech New Horizons tutorial series. Last episode, we got into some of the beginning machines that you want to craft up in the LVH. And uh, this episode, hopefully, we will get through a few more of the LME machines, and we will be able to get our Blast Furnace up and running, because that is kind of the end of the LVH, and that starts the MVH, getting aluminum and the Blast Furnace by this point you might be noticing you're struggling a bit on steam so we want to upgrade our steam production and one of the ways to do that since we have now been to the twilight forest is to craft up the solar boilers they require silver and you have to get to the twilight forest before we can do that there is also two versions there's a regular and a high pressure version the high pressure version is pretty easy to make except for it requires a bit more advanced Last, so up to you what you want to do. Basically, these are placed down the same as any other boiler. Uh, although these don't auto output to any side, you have to move the output. That little gray square is the output. So I moved it and faced it to that. So these will immediately start filling up with water using heat. Just be careful when you place these down because they do immediately start heating up. And if you have like a long line and you're not producing enough water, to fill the whole line up almost instantly, you may get these boilers heating up before it gets water and they will explode. So just keep that in mind. Another way to do that, uh, produce more steam, is to craft up the railcraft boilers. And one of the popular ones to do is the solid fuel boiler, uh, solid fueled boiler firebox. And if you want to do that, a good size to start out with is a two by two then a two by two by two of the tanks on top and if you look at the tooltips it does tell you what dimensions now this is for the base the one by one two by two three by three and then if you look at the boiler it'll tell you the dimensions of the boilers on top of the machine now each of these produce a certain amount again there is a high pressure and a low pressure Variants here, and one produces 20 millibuckets a tick, one produces 10. And uh, depending on how many of these is the more fuel it consumes and the more steam that it produces. And one of the popular ways to fill these with steam is to use charcoal. And we can get a whole bunch of charcoal by using Coke ovens. To go ahead and do that, we can craft more Coke ovens. Go ahead and do that. And depending on how big of the boiler it is, the more coke ovens we need. So something like this might only need two or three coke ovens, whereas the largest one, which is a three by three of fireboxes. And then on top is a three by three by four structure. So this one is quite large and produces a bunch of steam. Now if you remember from the tooltip, these are 10 millibuckets each uh, per boiler. So now we have a 3 by 3 by 4 which is 36 boilers times 10. You're producing 360 millibuckets per second um, of steam. Um, obviously it needs a lot more water and it needs a lot more charcoal to feed that. So something like this size might need over 20 in coke ovens so it's up to you how big you want to expand this and how much steam you want to produce and i find an easy way to transport all the charcoal is use brass item pipes there is tin item pipes but just so you know they are a bit bugged when placing them down you need a steel wrench to break them a regular a regular iron wrench which is probably what you have this point won't break them so if we look at the brass pipes brass item pipes next to these the harvest level is three and the harvest level is only one on that although the tin are technically worse than the brass pipes so just keep that in mind it's easier just to use brass maybe or uh 
And basically what you can do is just connect both of these. And if you want, and craft up this conveyor module and attach that to the pipe. And just hit it with a screwdriver. And it'll turn it into import mode and that'll pull out the charcoal from there and anywhere it possibly can go in the pipes we'll send it to that so now you if you want you can you know go ahead and build up you know 20 coke ovens if you want to go this route and have a big long line of the things and feeding this automatically with charcoal and then uh you could be feeding it with water from your water tanks, but you, again, you might need, you know, four water tanks to get something that is this size. So just keep an eye on this because if these do run out of water and they are super hot, they will explode. Now, if we want to automate this, we can go ahead and attach the pipes. And go ahead and something a little different. So we can see how the logic of these pipes work. I'm going to connect them like that. And just throw a hopper right there. And that'll start inputting the items into the pipe. Let's make sure it's full. And then the pipes are going to come here and then it's going to do, it's kind of random. And usually it goes to the closest one. So as we can see, it is outputting the wood into here and it is only filling up this coke oven since this is farther it's going to fill this up once this is full then it'll start shooting it down there so there isn't a whole lot of logic that we can do with these item pipes unfortunately one of the things you can actually do is use restrictive pipes you place the restrictive pipe this will act like it is much farther away than any other pipe on the network so now if we do this Throw some wood in there, it'll pull out there, and it'll go to this coke oven. So it's a little bit difficult to work with the Greg Tech item pipes. There's no like round robin or anything like that, but it's mostly it'll insert into the closest thing possible and then it'll move down the line. So if I had, you know, 15 of these in a row, it would start from the first one and work its way down. Um, so just keep that in mind. You can also do a conveyor module if you want so if i wanted i could put that on there put a chest down and then have it out pull out the the items from there if you do import it'll pull the items out but just keep in mind that these conveyors the very early ones are quite slow this is only one stack every 20 seconds one every five seconds on so just keep that in mind at the very beginning that these are quite slow but uh yeah there is the kind of automated uh, charcoal production with the steam now the only other thing we need to do is get the steam into the boiler and if we remember we talked about the boilers each of them produces a certain amount of steam and this one is 10 millibuckets per tick. I may have said seconds earlier. It is 10 millibuckets per tick. So that is times 20. You find out your per second. So it'll be 200 steam per second per boiler. So times 36. So you're looking at about, what is that, 7,200 steam per second. And uh, if we look at the fluid pipes, we need something that can transfer that much. So if we see this huge bronze pipe, we think, oh, that's cool. It has a fluid capacity of 9,600 liters per second. The issue with these uh, fluid pipes, the Greg Tech ones, they can only transfer half of their capacity to the next pipe. So they really can only uh, transfer 4,800 liters per second. Uh, it's a little bit deceiving. So it says fluid capacity, but the actual transfer rate is only half that. So if we're producing 7,200, we need to find a pipe that actually can transfer 7200. So really, if you're looking at it, a huge steel pipe would be the, the earliest one to use because that can actually transfer almost 10,000. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you are wanting to transfer lots and lots of steam, you're going to need big, big, uh, big fluid pipes to transfer it all.
There are a couple opinions on this. One is you can attach the steam turbines directly to the boiler. Um, I have a tendency to like a a buffer, uh, but that is just me. But so there is a multiple ways to deal with that. And now that we've gone ahead and boosted up our steam production, there is time to get the blast furnace up and running. And there's a couple ways to do that. But uh, before we get into that really quick, if you put the valves on the side, unfortunately it does not auto output the steam into the pipes. Only the one on the bottom does. And if we look at the components, the electric pump only does 640 liters per second and the basic steam turbine consumes up to 1600. So obviously that does not produce a, enough steam using the pumps. So at this point, until we can craft up a higher tier pump, it's probably easier just to pipe the steam out the bottom of the tank. Now, if we take a look at the aluminum recipe, I'm actually going to pull this up really quick. Get the blast furnace recipe. This is the recipe we're going to be doing since we don't have any hydrogen or anything, any uh, gases quite yet. We'll do the blast furnace recipe. So we're going to need to be producing 120 EU per tick for this recipe to work. And obviously we are in the LV age. We're only producing 32 EU per tick with the basic steam turbine. Now there's a couple ways to do this. One way uh, some people like to do is put down multiple turbines and then have uh, steam pumped into all these and these producing, you know, 32 EU per tick each and then feeding that into the blast furnace. But uh, that requires much larger uh, steam production. I think with the large boiler and a whole bunch of coke ovens, we could actually handle four uh, turbines, maybe, um, yeah, we could probably handle four turbines. I don't think we could handle a fifth one, but, uh, what I actually find easier, and this is just my opinion, um, it's not like the best way to do it or the only way to do it, but I find using battery buffers is actually easier to do this. So I'm going to fill that up with steam and the battery buffer I suggest is actually the nine slot. We're not going to go ahead and put nine batteries in it, but you will see in a second. Connect that. Actually going to put sodium batteries. You though, so we can see them fill up. We're actually going to put three batteries in there, or six batteries. Um, and that is because, if we remember looking at the tin cables, you lose one EU per cable. So by the time we get it from the battery buffer into the blast furnaces or the hatches, it's going to lose power. And we have so little room for error here because the recipe is 120 EU per tick and four uh, four amps of LV is 128. We only have, you know, two or three cables that we can before we run out of power and the recipe will fail. So I suggest actually doing six batteries. Um, so we have a little bit of wiggle room here just for the first kind of ingots here. After that, it's going to become less and less of an issue, but at first um, we'll do that. So let me get the parts to the Blast Furnace, and we will be right back. Let's go ahead and get the Blast Furnace crafted up. So we're going to need three LV energy hatches. And this is just for the first few ingots of aluminum. After that, we won't need as many energy hatches. But there is the controller. We're going to need the input bus. We're going to need an output bus. And a maintenance hatch. The last bit is filled in with these heat proof machine casings. And the next layer is the Cooper nickel coil blocks. We need two of those. And then the top is the heat proof machine casings. 
And right in the middle is this muffler hatch. And it should turn green. Yep, there it goes. That means we have constructed it correctly. Now we just need to do a bit of maintenance. If you look at the machine controller, it tells you everything that needs to be done. So each thing requires a different tool. Pipe is loose is a wrench. Screwdri screws are loose is a screwdriver, etc. And there's six items. You basically just pick the item, click it on that square, and that will do the maintenance for you. We need all the maintenance done. Uh, the last one is a soldering iron, and it needs to be charged up a little bit. And you need some soldering material. I use fine soldering alloy wire. It's the cheapest one. So you just do that. And normally it uses this up. I'm in creative mode, so it didn't use at that time. But as we can see, all the maintenance issues are done, and it says running fine. Now we need to hook it up to the power. So we're going to use the six batteries we have right here. So we need something that can handle six amps. So I'm going to use the eight, uh, 10. And it may not pull six amps, um, but we're prepared for it to if it needs to. We could probably do like a one X cable here because it's never going to pull more than two amps kind of thing or a two X cable. I'm sorry, right there. But uh, yeah, there we go. There we have the batteries connected to the energy hatches, and then we can go ahead and get this going. So we look at the recipe. This should take, we're doing this one. So aluminum dust with a circuit of one, it should take 65.75 seconds, a full 120U per tick. And uh, we should get an ingot out of that. So this should turn green and it should stay running. And uh, yeah, there is the 65 seconds. So after that, we will get the one aluminum ingot. Now just be aware that uh, if this is full, it will avoid ingots. So keep that in mind. Always make sure this is, and they do auto output. So if you want to extra make sure, you could always just do like a, like a chest right there and it'll auto output into there. So the actual hatch won't uh, get full up, but uh, Obviously, it's running off these batteries, but as we can see, the batteries are dropping uh, pretty fast because we only have one steam turbine for now. But that will quickly be upgraded, and uh, the more steam we're producing, we can replace it with maybe the MV turbine or the uh, yeah the MV steam turbine. Um, but you need uh, aluminum for that, so this is kind of what you're doing to get your First aluminum here and we have three seconds left and there we go we have our first aluminum ingot obviously at first if you're trying to run this off one little basic steam turbine you're gonna have to wait for these to fill back up now it is filling the battery buffer up in there there they go they start filling up obviously it's quite slow so just keep that in mind and you can actually see how much power it's gonna need 157,000 EU per tick. So basically, um, it's going to pull 157,000 EU from this. Um, obviously, it's filling it up a bit, and uh, there is some cable loss, so it's not. It's going to be a little bit more than that. Um, but in general, if you're kind of around there, you kind of know um, with that. But anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. Next episode, we'll come back and uh, we'll see what we can craft now that we have a little bit of aluminum, and we'll check out maybe um, some more items. That we want to craft up some LV machines and we'll uh, hopefully get into some MV circuits the next stage. So thanks for watching and have a good one.